Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Darwin FPV Tiny Ape Freestyle. Freestyle as in top mounting, because we can't possibly freestyle a bottom mounted battery. No, <laughs> we can freestyle whatever we want and have some fun. It comes with Darwin FPV 1103 8000 kV motors. And on those motors are Gemfan 2512 three bladed props. Camera is the Runcam Nano 4. We've got the Darwin FPV all in one down here. That is an F411. It's a 15 amp uh, 2S flight controller, all in one unit. And that big beefy VTX up there, yes, that is power switchable from 25 milliwatts all the way up to 600 milliwatts. All in one board comes with a Betaflight flight control software as well as BlueJay ESC firmware. And Express LRS is built onto the board, but it's version 1. So you either have some updating to do to get to version 2, or maybe you're still on version 1. Got a capacitor out back. 3D print holds on to our two antennas, VTX, control link. It also gives our XT30 a little bit of a house. Got a rubberized battery mat, as well as kind of a cheapo depot of Velcro strap. They did use that fancy, famous motor wire tape that I'm always talking about. I call it Emax tape. People call it acetate tape. It's definitely not hockey tape. I've heard that one a hundred times. It's not hockey tape. Hockey tape is fuzzy. This is not. And you can see by that shine, we've got a plastic protection keeping water or maybe other things from getting up into our flight control board and you can see uh the screws are all consistent here all phillips headed got a little bit of motor protection out here over the end of the motor on my scale it weighs 53.85 grams and i went with a bigger 2s battery than they have recommended on their page because i felt like it needed it so i use this gnb 530 milliamp 2s battery and with that battery the weight comes to 80.5 grams Bottom carbon fiber plate is two millimeters thick and the top is 1.5. And motor post to motor post, I'm getting about 108 millimeters. Did you miss the motor post to motor post? We get a wiring map for our all-in-one board, shows us how everything should be connected. A spare <clears throat> battery strap, some zip ties, some screws, an antenna end cap, which I never use those things. And yes, it came with four stickers. Stepping back in flight, because I'm selfishly going to show you kind of a happy accident. If you didn't notice it before we took off, this battery wasn't fully charged. Probably sat in my bag a little longer than I should allow it. You know, sometimes the batteries tend to lose a little voltage the longer they sit. I know, not good battery maintenance. But, you know, I kept waiting for weather that I could uh, fly this thing outside as well as other quads. So I kind of kept batteries charged and every once in a while I would just throw them on the charger and I'd cycle them down and cycle them back up. And, well, this one probably got missed. But as I said, I'm picking this flight because of a happy accident. And I'll uh, point it out to you um, right after it happens because I'm sure you'll notice it. So not necessarily my best flight. Uh, I definitely did not change the battery voltage to where it won't annoy us. So uh, forgive me for that. I did not adjust the battery voltage down. That's something I kind of wish manufacturers would do. But I also know that uh, when it comes to us FPV guys, everybody's got a certain different... Well, there it was. Whoa. You see that? <laughs> got sloppy. Went whatever that backwards whoop de doo thing is. And right between the A-frame and the swing set. So that's why I wanted to show you this flight. Plus, I think the flight also shows you how the quad handles. So, you know, nothing lost in showing you the happy accident, too. Uh, but I understand that, you know, all of us FPV guys, you know, we'll have all these different methodologies to how we want to care for our batteries. Some people will run them into the ground. Some of them won't fly them below storage voltage. So, uh, yeah, we, we got to start somewhere. It's an easy enough thing to change. I hadn't at this point made that change yet. Uh, this was a preliminary day out, still relatively cold. But, nice, and you can also see that not much had changed in the yard since I did the TTQ35 review, except for there is uh, more water in the yard, and more water in the pool, but that's not swimming water, that's, uh, you know, rainwater. Uh, we will have some more movement on the pool developments, though, so uh, I don't know when it will be in the next video, though, because I've got the next video, I think, pretty much taken care of, so maybe in the video after that... Um, yeah, some new products coming around. I'm not certain if how sh soon they will show up. But anyways, uh, so this flight, I am not going to run this battery completely dead into the ground, but I'm going to get dad gum close because I just kind of got lost in myself. You know, I have that flashing low battery, low battery, and I was like, oh yeah, I'll monitor that and I'll get it down and get a fix on where I want to set the battery at. That way uh, I can, you know, like I typically do, I try to land the flights disarmed at 3.5 volts per cell. 
Um, but at this point, I hadn't set the uh, uh, adjustment in the battery low voltage warning, so I was just flying and flying and flying. I think the flight ends up being uh, 3 minutes and 19 seconds, and I do disarm, come in slightly under 3.5 volts. I think it's 3.41 is what, but you'll be surprised that how that little battery, how low it goes and I continue to fly it and then it bounces back. So one of the things that caught me off guard was the price of this. And I guess in my old man memory, I you know, was kind of thinking of Darwin FPV and the, the uh, original ape that I reviewed. And uh, unfortunately that came out at the time that was right before all of our prices started going up. Uh, so the price of this one isn't $69. The original ape isn't $69 anymore either. Uh, it's, I think, going at around 90 But there we go. We've landed this one. This one comes in at $123 last I looked. And you can see we're now disarmed. We're still getting a low battery warning, but it's at 3.41, which isn't horrible for our battery. And uh, flight time, 3 minutes and 19 seconds. So pretty good little fun flight. Plenty of punch outs and good times. I'm not trying to sell you on anything. Uh, this was the battery. I didn't think it was necessarily special, but it was the longest flight that I got. Uh, oftentimes, uh, my flights would come in above 3.5 volts because I had a hard time uh, adjusting not just the power setting that I put for the low voltage warning, but also in just my gauging how I was using the battery during the tail end of the flight. So yeah, this was the battery I was flying. It, it's a light battery. Oddly enough, it's it's nearly identical to the same size as the 450. So I'm skeptical about that milliamp rating. But anyways, I got to tell you what I was flying. It was flying this one. I did do not high voltage charge any of my multi-cell batteries. Uh, matter of fact, on this one, it was actually, I think we saw in the OSD, it was 4.08 volts per cell on the start of the flight. Anywho, okay, so now time for the critical re review parts. This I don't like. I've never liked these. Um, so I, that would be one of the first things I would swap that out for. Uh, I always have a hard time getting them on hard enough and squish down enough to where they'll keep my battery in a, in a pretty good full frontal crash and they won't come apart. So that'd be one thing I change. Now it gets kind of difficult because you can see the space down through there and this board has actually got this trapped. It is, a, you really should loosen this up to get the VTX a little bit loose to move this around. You can manipulate it through there without doing that. But so in order to get a thicker strap in through there, we might need a, an extra, you know, uh, a nylock nut or something to give us a little bit of a gap. And I think it can work. I'm a little bit concerned if you can get that rear, that rear bolt sticks out a little bit from that nut. And it looks like we've got the flight control boot button right below that. So I'm not certain we've got the space in order to do that. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're wanting to swap this out for thicker. Otherwise, you're going to have to squish your battery strap up through there. So that's my first complaint. Don't like these, but you know they're very budget friendly. I'm sure they can buy a thousand for fifty cents or something like that. This battery mat is really thin, and while it is rubberized and texturized, especially in combination with this strap, it is difficult to get your battery stuck down to where it feels like it's going to stay on the mat in a crash. Again, a full frontal crash that it's not going to come sliding forward. Uh, I did find that in most cases, the battery stayed relatively close to where I had originally put it when I had crashes. It would oftentimes shift kind of clockwise and counterclockwise. Um, but I, yeah, I, I know that keeps the weight low, but there's just not much compression that you can do with that. So uh, a couple of my initial complaints. Um, Express LRS being on version one, I think that's going to be a barrier for some people. In my particular case, I have a radio on version two and I have another one on radio version one, so I don't have to fuss with these things. So I can show you the PID tune as they came. Not, I did not flash beta flight in order to get the new version of Express LRS on there or the 2.0 version. Uh, so I can show you just how it came out of the box and it flew. No uh, modifications for me outside of uh, arranging the OSD elements where I have had them on the channel for many, many years and setting uh, flight modes and rates, typical personal stuff that we do for our radios. So one of the things that I would like, if you would, some people out there have already got to have a Darwin FPV product, at least one of some sort. And I want to know about your experience with it because uh, Darwin FPV is a relatively new company. Uh, they kind of burst onto the market in the, um, the original Ape review that had the three inch and those silver motors. Um, they've kind of seemed to be moving along a path. They've got their own flight control board. They've got their own uh, motors now. So they're, they're coming along and I'm interested to see or hear or read what everybody else is having. And not even just specific to this quad, you know, 
purchases you've made through Darwin FPV, their products. How's that going? What's shipping time like for you uh, getting it from Darwin FPV to your location? Uh, please leave your location. That's important information. So one thing they did really smart, it's because of my camera angle is going to be tough to show, is they put this little uh, nubbin right down here in their 3D print. Of course, you know, if you go sliding along the ground, that'll wear off. But that helps to ensure that if you come down and you land and there's a, a rock or a pebble or an uneven surface, we're not going to be bonking into our USB port continually. So that was a fairly ingenious and probably relatively simple thing to do. I think some people would look at these standoffs and know that they're nylon and think, oh, that's not near strong enough. Uh, you know, as long as we've got metal screws going through the most part of that and because it's lightweight enough, I think the risk is relatively low. I would like to see them uh, zip tie the battery strap to one of these to give us some sort of retention that's not tugging directly on the pads. Of course, I say that in all the videos whenever they don't do that. And there's really only, I think Emacs has started doing it as well as Avant Quads. Are Those are the two companies I can think of in the moment off the top of my head that are securing their uh, battery leads down uh, to some sort of part of the frame in order to get some strain relief from it pulling right off the EC, the, pulling on the ESC pads. Because battery ejections do happen Happen. and when they do happen they have to tug on the you know connecting lead to our flight control board and that can be sadness uh one other thing i have that is a complaint is the use of phillips headed screws in so many places i i, I just prefer hex um, I'm not certain why they chose phillips but phillips are always for me a little bit more difficult to get uh tight when i want things to tight be real tight like on the motors they're fine in other locations, like especially when you're you're tugging into TPU or a nylon. You know, you don't want to get those super tight. But when you're going into metal, uh, like the motors, you want to get things, you know, pretty hunched on there. And Phillips head screws, they tend to twist out, whereas hex, you know, rarely twist out. As long as you've got a, a decent or reasonable set of uh, hex drivers. So that's, I would prefer we saw hex everywhere, but... <laughs> They all are Phillips, so you don't have to hunt around for a separate tool. We get Phillips everywhere. I also kind of think that in this particular configuration, I would prefer to have the battery lead come out over here. Um, and even kind of loop it in, come out from the side, come out from the side and tuck it in there. And then you use your strap to hold the battery lead like this. And then you plug in your battery to the um, connecting associated connecting lead. This was real fussy, twisting this about, and like I said, the battery was oftentimes cockeyed because I didn't, in the bad case of my batteries, I didn't have enough length to mount it and then go between there. So I had to put the lead end near the connecting end and then just kind of hunker things around. Like typically what I would do is just kind of twist these wires and then I would twist this around so my balance port is kind of trapped and then strap my battery down and then twist this around and manipulate it until I could get it connected, which it was a little bit fussy. This Runcam Nano 4, it's okay. You know, I'm not a huge fan of that. I think it's a pretty washed out for such a sizable lens. I think the reason why they went this direction is because they wanted a real low profile. So you essentially, you're not going to be able to swap this out for a camera that has much more of a back end than the Nano 4. You probably can't see that, but it's pretty much just a board on the back side. So if you have any sort of camera with a case, you're not gonna get, you know, you'll either be stuck at a really high camera angle or you're not gonna be able to adjust it. So if you're wanting to replace this camera, that's something that you probably be stuck with is this camera or something very, very similar to where like a Runcam Nano 3, which has even got that tiny lens is probably gonna set back too much. But so you're gonna be very limited on your camera options and your camera angle if you swap it out because of the height of the stack or the uh, body of the uh, frame. VTX seems to perform fine. Uh, I didn't think it was overwhelming or underwhelming. So I guess that's good. If you don't notice something in being bad, that's good, I guess. Uh, this is one of the longer, I've seen this when other people ask me questions. There are two different kinds of X-T30s out on the market and this is the longer version of those. Um, I've actually got a bag of these, and for whatever reason, I kind of refuse to use the longer ones. It's a weird thing, I know. I, It's really weird. But, you know, I prefer the shorter version of X-T30s. I know, call me crazy. Yeah, and I mentioned the price comes in at uh, $123. Let me look at that again. Oh, it's gone up. It's $129.99, or I, my $123 number was just me being crazy. Uh, and they do have a version that you can get the Runcam thumb with it as well. Of course, when you add the thumb to it, it jumps up to 189.99.
Now, lastly, they do a weird thing and they mention the 3S battery on here. Can you fly it on 3S? It seems as though it would be fine, but with one giant caveat. Either you don't go past like 60% throttle or you put a throttle cut on your uh, beta flight configuration, which I'm sure Joshua Bardwell or somebody has a video on. Uh, you might call it, uh, there, what's the other ver name for when you reduce your motor output, not just ne necessarily a throttle cut, but a throttle scale maybe? I, I can't remember. So you can do that if you're running 3S. It kind of seems weird that on their website they would mention 3S will burn the motors. Because that just seems, I don't know, from a business perspective, that seems very, very risky to even mention 3S. Why not just say, this is a 2S quad? This isn't technically most 2S quads that will accept 3S voltage on the all-in-one kind of in this same category of 2S, not really 3S? I don't know. That's the way I see it. I flew it on 2S only. Not going to take the added risk of flying it on 3S and possibly having to do all sorts of beta flight uh, changes in order to do a throttle cut, which is probably very simple, but why? I don't know why you do that. Maybe you only have 3S batteries and you're waiting for your order of 2S batteries to come in. But I would just, if you're asking me, not that you are, I think this is a 2S quad, so I flew it on 2S. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise about the Darwin FPV Tiny Ape Freestyle. Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know how your purchases and other quads through Darwin FPV are going. I'm, I would like to, to build some uh, additional information in my head so I can help others decide what to get as well. Leave that down in the comment section, please. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.